Welcome biologists to the first session here on the Heidi Weinberg principle. So in this session, we're going to talk through what the principles are behind the Heidi Weinberg and also how to do it using some examples. So there's some conditions that we need to apply here to use the Heidi Weinberg principle. These two here are the most popular ones, which are taken directly from the Mark scheme. So we can apply the Hardy Weinberg principle when the population is large and mating within the population is random. There are a couple of other conditions, but they're not regulated on the Mark scheme, but those two in bold are. So for example, a small population of rabbits within a pet shop, we could not apply the Hardy Weinberg principle to them because the population isn't large and the mating would not be random. The mating would only occur between those individuals that have been purposely put together. So the Heidi Weinberg principle is these two formulas here. And you need to know what all the P's and all the Q's mean. So the small P here at the top is the frequency of the dominant allele. For example, all of the big R's. The Q here is the frequency of all the recessive alleles. For example, all the small R's. P squared, this one here, this is the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. For example, all the big R R's. 2PQ, this is the heterozygous individuals with the genotype of a big R and small R, for example. And the Q squared here, this is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, for example, small R, small R. So using these two formulas, you can calculate the different frequencies of the different genotypes or alleles that you are asked to calculate. So here's one example of a question if you want to pause it and have a go. Um, however, I will talk it through with you. So in this question, we're given percentages. So this percentage here, this 70%, is meaning that 0.7 of the population have a dominant phenotype. Now, this dominant phenotype could either be P squared, which is a homozygous dominant genotype, or it could be the heterozygous individuals, um, which have a, a dominant and recessive allele. Um, so normally, you always have to start off with looking for Q squared, which in this case is 0 0.3. And this is the homozygous recessive genotype. So this is what we're asked to calculate in our question here. So if I know that Q squared is 0 0.3, I can then calculate what Q is by square rooting that 0 0.3 to give me 0 0.5477. Now, if I know what Q is, I can work out what P is by using this top formula here, using one, take away what I know my value is for Q, which will give me 0.4523. If I know what P is, I can then calculate the rest of what I'm asked here. So I've got my answer for P here. I then need P squared. So in order to get P squared, I, I square my P value. And then in order to get my heterozygous tasters here, my 2PQ, I simply do 2 times P times Q, which you can see there. So that's how to answer this question. Here is another example of another question. Again, we need to start off by finding the Q squared value. Okay, so we're gonna pause it and have a go. Please do. So here you can see I'm being asked to calculate the frequency of my tall gene, which is P. I'm also being asked to calculate here the number of heterozygous P plants. So this again is another popular thing that they like doing with, with Hardy Weinberg. They actually want you to calculate the number of individuals. So again, I start off with Q squared. So Q squared is 30, 60 divided by 400. That's taken out of the question, which gives me 0 0.09. <clears throat> I then square root 0 0.09 to give me Q. If I know what Q is, I can then find out what P is by using this top formula here. One take away 0 0.3, which I know my value is for Q. And that gives me P, which is 0 0.7. Once I've got my value for P, I can then square it. Um, I could also find out my 2PQ by doing 2 times what I know for P and what I know for Q and that gives me 0.42. Now 0.42 is the percentage of 42% so in order to find out the number of indiv individuals that are heterozygous I need to times 0.42 times 400 which is the total number of individuals to give me 168 individuals that are heterozygous. So there we have the part one of Hardy Weinberg. Um, in the second video, I'm going to show you an example of, a t of an exam question, on which we'll, I will talk through and discuss with you. So remember, in your exams here with Hardy Weinberg questions, you always need to start off with trying to find out what Q squared is first, and then going from there. Guys, good luck with your exams, and all the best.